siren. Another one, another baby. Another baby siren. <sighs> All right. The entire way. Oh my God. There's a corn snake. What are you doing, dude? Hey, 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 hey. We are not doing that. Two mice, no snakes. There's another mouse. Another mouse. Oh, this piece looks so good. I've only ever gotten a snake under it once though. All right, last two pieces. Man, that looks peachy. One more piece. Nope, nothing under the last piece, but I got my main target for this spot, so I'm not even upset. Well, I honestly can't believe that just happened. That was amazing. And on my birthday, right? Like, that's a snake I get to see only a couple times a year. And I just so happened to get one on my birthday. I mean, that is just wild. And a five footer. That just does not happen very often. So the day's not over yet. Uh, I failed getting a mud snake at the last spot, but I've got another spot that's got plenty of mud snakes that I'm gonna go to now. And hopefully I'll have a little more luck there. So that's where we're headed now. So I guess let's just get right to it and uh, see if I can find a mud snake. Well, I'm on the way to the, oh crap, hold up. Gotta be quick, gotta be quick, gotta be quick. Okay. <laughs> All right, I just narrowly saved this musk turtle right here. Literally, if it had been a couple more seconds, this guy would have gotten plowed by one of those cars right there. He is super lucky to be alive right now. But yeah, as you can see, this is a musk turtle and not a mud turtle, unlike the one that we found earlier. As you can see, the pieces of the plastron are, are smaller. Okay, so more of this stuff is exposed and uh, there's not a hinge on this bottom one and a little bit of a hinge on the top one, but there's only one hinge on the musk turtle turtle, but there are two hinges on the mud turtle, so that's your big difference there. And oh, look at that. He's giving me a big old smile, or at least he was. But uh, I'm going to get this guy across the road here because I've got cars coming, and uh, we'll keep going to the mud snake spot. No ways if you find a turtle. Release them off to the side of the road that they were going before. So he was going this way, so I'm just going to let him go the same direction he was going. I think he came from that big old wetland right there. I don't know where the heck he's going, but... I'll let him do him, so cool. All right, so the second mud snake spot was also a bust, unfortunately. I mean, it's not the hugest surprise in the world because, I mean, it's mud snakes, you know, that they are weird. Uh, you're never guaranteed a mud snake. I mean, you're never guaranteed anything, but mud snakes especially are very, very elusive and hard to find, so it doesn't surprise me. So I just want to go out and find a couple more snakes that, you know, are really common to me just to cap the night off, and uh, I'm going to head over to the spot now, and uh, I'm pretty optimistic, so uh, let's see what I can get. Well, y'all didn't really get to see this, unfortunately, but I was walking along there and I came within maybe an inch of stepping on this cotton mouth right here. <laughs> it's not a very big one. It's a slightly younger individual, but it is definitely a cotton mouth. Y'all can see that. This is one of the venomous species of snakes that we get in the area. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give you all a closer look at this snake and uh, tell you a thing or two about this little guy because they are a very misunderstood snake that needs more proper representation. Oh, did you just snap at me, little dude? That's unusual. Usually cottonmouths don't even strike at you. So, what we've got right here is a snake that pretty much everybody knows about, especially if you live in the Mid-South like I am right now. So, so I don't know if y'all saw that just right there, but he came right towards me. There's a very, very common misconception that goes around that these snakes, the cottonmouths, will actually chase you. And uh, there are a few circumstances in which one of these snakes will come in your direction. As you can see, he definitely did just come in my direction right there. He came right to me. But, as you could tell, I didn't freak out. I just sat still. I didn't, you know, panic or make any sudden movements. And you noticed he did not try to bite me. And that's because all this snake was focused on when he was doing that was getting somewhere safe. Getting somewhere that I will no longer be a threat to it. And once they are in that mindset of uh, getting away and getting somewhere they feel safe, there is an almost 0% chance that that snake is going to try and bite you when it's running away from you because that's not its main focus. As y'all saw, he 
was coming right in between my feet there for a second. And, uh, you know, that's actually something I've had happen quite a few times with these guys when I'm encountering them, is I will be in between them and somewhere that they want to go, and they'll come right in my direction. But as long as I stay still, as long as I stay calm and placid, then they never attempt to bite, all right? That one little strike he did just a minute ago when I first uh, walked by him, that's something that very, very rarely happens. In fact, I've only had maybe a handful of these snakes actually strike at me out of the literally thousands of these snakes that I have found in my lifetime. I'm not exaggerating about that whatsoever. I am probably in the thousands with these snakes now. Uh, I mean, I see them all the time. Usually what they're going to do is they're going to gape their mouth open like that. I don't know if you're seeing them doing it right now, but this is a very characteristic defense display of a cotton mouth is opening their mouth up like that. Now obviously, do I ever recommend anybody go out and mess with the venomous snake? like I am right now. No, absolutely not. The only reason I'm doing this is number one because I have tons and tons of experience with these snakes and I know exactly how to not get bit by them. Number two, this is for y'all. Alright, this is an educational thing that I'm trying to do to help y'all understand these snakes better and to uh, give them a better reputation and in turn help them in the long run because uh, they really do need a lot of help because uh, there have been generations and generations of misconceptions and myths that go along with these snakes that it's going to take a lot of work to get undone, alright? That's the whole purpose of this channel is I'm trying to show you how these snakes actually behave, how they actually are, and to show you that you really do not need to be scared of them. They are not something you need to be afraid of. As long as you leave them alone and give them their space, they're gonna do the exact same thing for you. And even when I was within an inch of stepping on him, still did not try to bite, didn't even gape his mouth open, he just sat there and let his camouflage do its job, and uh, that's uh, how most of the encounters with these snakes actually go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this little guy back where he was, let him continue hunting, and uh, we'll see if I can find anything else tonight. Alright, well I'm just gonna go ahead and escort my little friend here, Mr. Uh, Cottonmouth, back over to the water where he was. So I'm just gonna see to it that he gets there. Alright, buddy. Come on. You gotta go, bud. Oh no, stop that. This way. Hold on. He's being stubborn. There you go, bud. Off into the water he goes. There you go. See, they're no big deal. All you gotta do is give them their respect and they'll respect you back. That's all I want y'all to understand with the videos I make about cotton mouths, is just leave them alone and they'll leave you alone, that's all. You don't have to be terrified of them. Look at this little guy. Got a green tree frog right there. Probably gonna see quite a few more of these during the night here. Nice. Let's see what else is over here. Oh my goodness, y'all look at this. There is... One baby red-eared slider right there, and then another baby red-eared slider right there, and then another baby red-eared slider right there. Check this out. Here, look. Whoa. <laughs> Cute little guys. I don't know why there's three of them just right here. Maybe they came out of the nest recently and they've been sticking together since. Who knows? Very cool though. Okay, I see a water snake right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. It's just his head poking out of the water. But I want to get a hold of this guy so I can show you the differences between it and the cotton mouth. Oh yeah. All right, so what we've got here, oh my goodness, is uh, don't worry, I'm not hurting him. I'm only lightly putting pressure on his tail to make sure he doesn't get away. But this is a yellow-bellied water snake, also known as a plain-bellied water snake. And this snake gets confused for cotton mouths in many different instances. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple of the ways you can tell the difference. All right, now take a look at this. So this is a snake that y'all should all know how to identify for sure because <laughs> if you live anywhere that has water nearby in the southeast, you are probably going to get some variety of this snake, the plain-bellied water snake, and uh, 
It's really good to know the difference between these and cottonmouths because they typically live in conjunction with one another and people confuse one for the other very, very frequently. As you can see, this snake is uh, yeah, two and a half-ish feet long, not too big. This species of snake can actually get much, much bigger than this. They can actually push five feet sometimes. I found some absolutely giant ones. This is actually technically a pretty small one. Now, when they're bigger like this and they're no longer a baby or a juvenile, they're going to have a plain gray back like this. If you see a snake by the water and it has a mostly plain gray back, it is probably this snake right here, the yellow-bellied or plain-bellied water snake, whatever you want to call it. Most people will say that a cottonmouth is a black snake, a solid black snake. That is 100% not true, okay? Cottonmouths are always going to have a pattern of some sort. You saw with that one just a minute ago that it had a very, very vibrant pattern and that's very, very typical for cottonmouths, even larger ones, okay? The younger ones are much, much more colorful than the adults, but even in the adults, if you look at them, they will have a saddleback pattern going down their back. They are not solid black. Now, if you do see a solid colored gray snake like this in the water, and it's got a yellow lip, that's one of the best ways you can tell this is a yellow-bellied or plain-bellied water snake from a decent distance is if it's got that yellow lip right there, okay? A cottonmouth is gonna have like a raccoon kind of stripe going horizontally straight through its eye. So it's gonna have a black stripe going straight through its eye, and then right above that black stripe, it's gonna have a white stripe above it, and a white stripe below it, almost exactly like a raccoon. And that's a great way that you can tell which snake is which. So contrary to popular belief, just because you see a snake that is by the water does not mean that it is a cottonmouth. There is actually five native species of water snake that live in this area, and there's only one cottonmouth, all right, AKA water moccasin. They're both the same snake. In most cases, you are a lot more likely to see a water snake than you are a cottonmouth, okay? So don't just instantly assume that because it's a snake and it's in the water that it is venomous and it's a cottonmouth, because in a lot of cases, it's actually not. I would actually say, depending on where you are, of course, but in most cases, it's probably not a cottonmouth and just instead is a harmless and non-venomous water snake. So there's your difference between the plain-bellied and the cottonmouth, so cool snake, a very classic one that we get in this area, very iconic, so it's really important that y'all know how to identify these, so I hope you do now. Alright, let's go ahead and let him go and see what else is out tonight. Alright, and just like the cotton mouth, I'm gonna go ahead and escort him back to the water, right over here, and just let him get back to what he was doing. Probably just out trying to get some fish and frogs, so I'm gonna go right back to that bud. And there he goes. Yellow-bellied or plain-bellied water snake, how about that? All right, well, let's keep going. You know, it's funny, because when I'm looking for snakes out here, I have to watch my step, because every two seconds, there's one of these uh, Fowler's toads. You know, they're out calling pretty hard tonight. There's another one right there, and then there's another one right here, and then there's another one right there. There's a lot of them out tonight, and you just gotta watch your step because I don't wanna accidentally step on any of them. Let's check this out. We got another plain-bellied water snake, and he's just kinda sitting right here. He's a bigger one. It's a much bigger one. Oh, <laughs> there he goes. Very skittish little fellas. See, all he wanted to do was get away from me. I don't know what all these people are talking about when they say snakes chase them. It's ridiculous. And we have another yellow-bellied water snake. That's one of the nice things about water snakes. You know, people don't appreciate them enough, I feel like, because uh, they're very frequently the snake that prevents you from getting skunked. And, you know, while it may not be a huge deal to see a water snake, it's always still fun, though, right? So, all right, well, oh. Oh, are you gonna go? Yes, sir, he is. All right, let's see if there's any other snakes. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for this one, guys. You know, what a way to spend my 21st birthday, actually finding a corn snake, which is something that hardly ever happens. 
and uh, just so happens that I found one on my birthday this year so that's just absolutely amazing plus got to see some other really cool snakes too so hope you all enjoyed the video happy birthday to me uh, that's, that's 21 man it's uh, pretty crazy a little scary but uh, also uh, pretty exciting at the same time so uh, until next time I'll see you all in the next video I hope you all learned something cool and uh, have a great day guys Y'all will not believe this.